Time now for one full hour of nitro-fueled NHRA talk. It's The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now your hosts, Marty Huff and 10-time NHRA winner Doug Herbert. You're listening to The Straight Line on drag racing at MRN.com. Thanks for being here for our one-hour horsepower. Appreciate you joining us. Championship implications from winners on today's show. Erica Ender Stevens has all but wrapped up her second straight pro stock title. Del Worsham gets a crucial win over his nearest competitor. And Jerry Savoie makes himself a contender with a motorplex victory. We're in thin to win and set to launch another edition of the straight line. Wherever you may be, across the country, around the world, you're listening to The Straight Line on MRN.com, along with four-time IHRA Top Fuel Champion and 10-time IHRA Champion, 10-time NHRA National Event winner Doug Herbert. I am Marty Huff. And, boy, the, the Motorplex, we talked about it last week, it very rarely fails uh, to to deliver great racing, and we saw it again this weekend. Great championship implications and just a super race all around. Well, absolutely. Billy Meyer, uh, that owns the track and runs the track, takes a lot of pride in that and yeah. making sure that they have a good facility to race at. So it didn't let anybody down this weekend. The cars were running fast. The, uh, the dragsters, the funny cars, the pro stock cars, the bikes, everybody was running fast. So great weekend for racing. So, saw some good ETs. And... Uh, you know, saw the field shuffle around a little bit. I'd say Antron is looking pretty yeah. heavily favored in top fuel. Uh, obviously, Erica in pro stock, you know, the wheels would have to fall off for yeah. her to not probably win. Uh, and then Warsham did a heck of a job making sure that he stayed ahead of Backman. So uh, pretty pretty tough deal, but great results there. And then Jerry Savoie coming in and – Making wow. a point, I, I think he's, uh, yeah, he's less than two rounds out of the points lead. So, tough deal. Really, they are they are really in it for a fight. Del Worsham, uh, going in there, when you win a race, you're expecting to make some separation from your nearest competitor. He and Jack Beckman are almost glued together. I mean, they have welded themselves. It, it's back and forth. He wins. Right. Jack wins. They they wind up in the finals together. They just can't separate it. So, which is going to make for great drama. Hopefully, when we get down to Pomona and that last event, uh, that could be historic. It's going to be crucial. And like you say, Beckman's car has been running so well. He's got a little bit of a performance advantage, I would say, still. But Worsham's car is running good. He went into the final with lane choice, so you yeah. know that just tells us how strong that car is. That DHL team, the whole bunch over there at Coletus has really got that car running well. And if we need to talk to Dell a little bit about that, but Dell is not just the driver of that car. You know, Dell yeah. I'm sure has something to do with that car and the way that it runs too. So we'll talk to him a little bit about that. No question about it. Uh, they've got a great brain trust over there. It, we talk a lot about. How many crew chiefs that are over on the uh, on the Don Schumacher side? But when you start looking at Coletta's setup, I mean, you have got both Jono and Jimmo uh, that are uh, doing great things, uh, and Tommy Delago is over there, and then you've got the the whole DHL team, which is kind of uh, well, you got Nikki Bonifani, and then of sure. course Dell, uh, you know, and then you've got. Conrad, you know, and he knows he's burned more nitro than anyone. That's a I fact. mean, anyone. That so, is a fact. Uh, there's something to be said about Connie. I mean, he is his nickname is the Rad Man, and that's because he's not bashful about making changes, <laughs> which sometimes is good, sometimes yeah. is bad. With a little bit of a muffler, uh, you know, uh, kind of tone him down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Connie's pretty tough. He's tough to beat. Yeah, no it, doubt about it. it. Lots of experience over in the Coletta camp, and that uh, it, it's showing. Getting down to the last two events, Dill Worsham still leading the points. Congratulations, by the way, to Richie Crampton for winning the top fuel end. We are working on Richie for next week's show. Um, you, you know, it, it, it kind of reminds me, that operation kind of reminds me right now a, a little bit of how you operated back in the day 
you know, as a, as an independent single car out there and just going out there and just competing as hard as you can and going getting out there and getting results. Um, sometimes it's not real consistent in how it happens, but man, I mean, you, you come down to on any given Sunday, they could go out there and win and proved it this weekend. Well, absolutely. That car runs really well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the team does a good job. Richie's doing a good job driving the car. So that's a, that's a, they're a contender. And like you say, they've had a little bit of peaks and valleys. But when you're able to win a race and, and derail the, the Schumacher train, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's saying, saying something. A lot. I mean, yeah. that team, well, they're, they've gotten back into where they're doing a lot themselves. Like when we were talking to uh, Morgan on the, on the show the other week, yeah. you know, they're making their own. Uh, chassis in house yep. they're they're doing a lot of their own stuff so that you know that's an advantage you you're only going to go so good when you're buying everything from alan johnson you yeah. know or or not and nothing against alan but alan's always one step ahead of you too you know? when <laughs> yeah. you're buying stuff from him he's tested something a little bit different on his car i can almost assure you all right you're getting good stuff you may not be getting the great stuff and uh they're uh they're really proving it mike dunn brought up something on the broadcast, which I, I thought was kind of telling. He says, when you're looking at great drivers, you're looking at their final round record. He's six and zero right now or seven and zero since he turned pro, since he got into the driver's seat, he gets into the final and they find a way to win. I mean, that's really saying something about a driver when he can go in there. He hasn't lost a final since he became a driver a couple of years ago. It's amazing. Well, that is amazing, and you know it says a lot about the team too. Because yeah. drivers, you know, you can't win a race unless you oh, have a good car. No, no but, question. Uh, drivers are uh, they can lose a lot more races <laughs> than they can win, yeah. really. Yeah. But you're exactly right. He's went and not made any mistakes, or not made big enough yeah. mistakes that have cost him to not win in the final. That is saying something. That's a that's a good job uh, for Dunn to pull that out. It, it, and, yeah, and you know, come up with that stat. Sure. Um, but um, it, it just says it just says something about that uh, that operation. But um, Tony Schumacher going out early on in the top fuel uh, f division, uh, and then Antron going a couple of uh, rounds further. Boy, that uh, it, it's going to be real tough for Tony or anybody else to get back into that thing. I mean, uh, yeah, I talked to Tony on the phone last night, and he was pretty much yeah, you know, he he's. Pretty much thinking that the ship sailed here. So yeah. they, the losing early this last week is almost impossible to recover from now. Right, um, it, and very uncharacteristically, got launched, got down to about half track, and then lit the tires up. At that point, uh, it, it, that's that's usually not their mo. I mean, they're usually going A to B. Driver is the machine, like we, he talks about. You talk about it a lot. You just be in that machine, taking off, being on time, and getting A to B. Eh, it's going to win you a lot of rounds. It's going to win you a lot of championships. He's proven that, and uh, they they just didn't get that done this weekend. Well, you know, and there's some pressure on them to step the performance up a little bit because of the way Antron Brown's car has been running. So true, you get your back into the wall, and you know you got to take a shot, and that's probably what they're doing. So you can't. You know they were they were in a in a catch up position yeah, right. already, so yeah. they needed to go out there and do something, show them uh, you know something a little bit special, and that's what they're trying to do. And it just didn't work out that time. It has worked out a lot of other times for them. So <laughs> you know yeah. you, you can't say well that was a bad deal. Yeah, right. Yeah, no question about that. Coming up on the program, we will talk to Eric Anders Stevens, who had a fantastic weekend of racing. Um, right now, uh, all but six points wrapped up the championship. Uh, her second straight in the pro stock ranks. We will talk to her in just a minute. Um, Del Worsham will be here. We'll talk about the a crazy final round uh, against Jack Beckman, his nearest competitor. And we'll also talk to Jerry Savoie, who had at least three to four hundredths on the nearest quickest bike all weekend long. I mean, I don't know what they found, and if, uh, I sure that Jerry's not going to tell us what they found, but they found something in there because not only did he win, but he whooped them. 
Oh, yeah, low ET of every round. That, every that bike was round. running really good. I know he gets engines from Vance and Hines, the, yes. but they do a lot of their own stuff over there. I know the electronic fuel injection and some other mm-hmm. things. So we'll talk to Jerry a little bit. I'm with you. I don't think he's going to spill the beans, <laughs> but no. at any rate, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that Vance and Hines Suzuki engines are, uh, you know, what's powering yeah. his bike. So uh, the, uh, the Harleys have kind of hired their own assassin really when you look at it like that because that suzuki is running better than the harleys right now yeah and and jerry gave credit where credit is due and that's eddie craywick uh eddie craywick heads up the suzuki program at yeah. vance and hines and uh, while he was on camera pointed right at him and says yeah that's the guy right there and uh so yeah vance and hines has kind of hired their own assassin over there but uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic and we've talked to uh, both uh, Andrew and Eddie about that because they both work in the shop during the week and yeah they want to be competitive and they want to win championships but they're also making a good chunk of change by having very competitive well Vance, competitors. And, Hines, Vance and Hines is a supplier and a manufacturer they make yeah. the parts for the Suzuki's and the Harleys so uh uh, you know, you've got to give your customers good stuff, just like we were talking about Alan Johnson and Top Field. You've got to yeah. give your customers good stuff. Yeah, and right. They're going to beat you sometimes with it. So, hats off to the Vance and Hines guy for doing that. Yeah, uh, and uh, so they they were fantastic this weekend. Jerry Savoy and the uh, White Alligator Racing Team, and we will talk to him a little bit uh, later on in the program. But when we come back. We will talk to the leader and just about wrapped up her second straight Pro Stock Championship. We will talk to Erica Ender-Stevens next. This is The Straight Line. More right after this. Improve fuel economy and restore power with Royal Purple Max Atomizer Fuel Injector Cleaner on sale now at O'Reilly Auto Parts for $4.99. Clean clogged injectors, save gas, and maximize engine performance with Royal Purple Max Atomizer Fuel Injector Cleaner for $4.99 at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Dale Jr. here. I wear Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans for any occasion. With new styles and great fits, you'll look good and feel comfortable anytime, anywhere. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans are built with a U-shaped construction, so they give you more room where you need it. And their four-way flex technology moves with you for all-day comfort. In the garage or out and about, Wrangler knows the ins and outs of comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. It's the Straight Line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Appreciate you being here on a Wednesday afternoon along with Doug Herbert. I'm Marty Huff, and joining us on the telephone line right now is the winner of the Pro Stock Division at the Motorplex in Dallas. Eric Anders Stevens joins us. Erica, congratulations on another fantastic weekend and doing it in your home state. Thank you very much. It was, it was pretty exciting. Well, winning in Dallas is a little bit different than winning in Houston because Houston is your hometown, but at least you're close to home. And, uh, man, the, the points lead that, you're, that your whole team, I mean, you guys have just been incredible this year, and, and that's got to feel good. Yeah, it really does. It's, it's awesome to be able to do it again. And, you know, I know it's uh, not even close to being over yet, but uh, winning in Dallas is awesome. It's uh, four hours from my house in Houston, and then uh, just two hours from our shop in Oklahoma. So we had everybody, like all my all my guys' wives and kids were there. My family was there. So it was uh, it's kind of like another hometown race, and um, I love and, and hate those at times yeah. because it's just uh, <laughs> it's so distracting, and there are so many people, and everybody wants a piece of your time. And you know, of course, we're appreciative of everybody coming down, but. Sometimes it's hard for everyone to understand that we're there to work and, um, you know, win races. So, anyway, it was a, it was definitely a good, fun weekend. And um, the way the ladder fell on Sunday was really interesting with all of the top three in points on the same side of the ladder and Chris and Greg having to face each other first round and me having to face the winner of them second round. It was just uh, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have bet all my money that it was going to happen like that. 
Hey, I know one of the things you're most excited about, Erica, is winning that cowboy hat. That was You were thinking about that for a little <laughs> while, huh? Yeah, I've been talking about it for a long time, actually, and that and getting your name on a brick in front of the tower in the, in the shape of Texas. So those, uh, those are two pretty significant deals that I had been going after for quite some time. And then it just so happened that it was the 30th anniversary race, and they gave us a belt buckle, too. So it was totally a, a Texas fad race winter circle i guess it was uh it was a lot of fun the pink uh uh fire suit uh, that uh that looks really good are you uh, planning on using that beyond the month of october because that uh if, it seemed to pop really good on camera at least <laughs> yeah i'll probably end up i mean because i got it to wear for breast cancer awareness sure. month. um one of my really good friends lisa who i'm sure y'all might be familiar with she uh started vt the the team shirt company anyway she was uh, fighting breast cancer and had a double mastectomy and she's uh just a really good friend of mine and has been a huge supporter so i uh i did that with her brand on the back it says um suck it cancer she came up with that t-shirt line and <laughs> so it was a pretty cool deal and that's why we that's why we did that um was for her and all the other females out there fighting breast cancer but yeah i think i'm gonna wear it I mean, Vegas falls in October, yeah. but Pomona's in November. I'll probably just finish the year off with it. Well, that is cool. And Lisa is, uh, yeah, she is a super neat person and really think that's awesome that you're supporting her uh, with that pink fire suit. That is super. Hey, with Erica, with the eighth win of the year, would you have guessed that coming into the season that yeah. you and the team was going to be so strong? Low ET of every round, knocking them dead, average reaction time of the day, and uh, uh, was a 016th. That's you guys are just tough. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, I had, I mean, I had, I had hoped that that's the way it was going to fall. But, you know, um, we set our goals high at the beginning of the year. My crew chief's goal um, was to win 13 for elite performance. And, you know, we're not we're not there yet, but we're making our way there, um, especially with Drew Skillman and then Roger Brogdon, who started off the year with us and won at Phoenix. So mm. there are a couple additional wins to what we've uh, what we've gotten done. But I'm just uh, I'm so proud of my team. You know, it's it's really hard to it, I say hard. It's different to be chased rather than to chase. Like it's kind of like you're almost playing a little bit of defense. But we didn't want to change our mindset or how we race. Um, just because of that so um, my guys have helped me with that and I've helped them with that you know just stay focused and one round one at a time and uh, it was our goal to get at least eight because uh, Angel led for females mm -hmm. for seven wins in one season and I, I wanted to get that record from her and you know obviously she's a good friend of mine and, and such a talented rider but um, yeah I'm, I'm proud of my guys and I hope that we're able to get 10. You know, our goal is to go out and win these last two as well. But um, that's a tall order, and, and we've got our work cut out for us. But I know uh, I know we're capable of anything. Pro Stock is uh, – there's a little bit of a drama going on in the Pro Stock pits, a little bit of a soap opera. Um, yeah. You mentioned the, um, the second round was going to be interesting either way no matter who won that. I mean, obviously, Greg bowing out in the first round kind of helped you with points. But then uh, you go straight ahead with Chris McGay, hey. Um, you, you kind of told the backstory about that after the race. Can you mm -hmm. explain a little bit about uh, what, you, what you had said uh, there after the race and what was, what's been kind of going back and forth between uh, the McGay, hey camp and the elite performance camp? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I hate the drama side of it. I hated drama in high school, and I feel like <laughs> we're all too old for it now. But it's like, I, I said in the press room, I don't know, it just rolled off my tongue uh, by accident, but I feel like drag racing high school with money. It's just absolutely ridiculous how certain people act in certain situations. But, you know, you can't control that. All you can do is, is focus on your yourself and your team. And, um, you know, me and my guys, we keep God first and we uh, keep our goals in, in mind and don't dwell on what's going on behind the scenes. But having said that, there's been some uh, some crap talking going on and, um, you know, from that from the Magaha camp and uh, his wife and whatever else. So it, it definitely added a little bit of fuel to my fire going up there and having to race him second round because, you know, I, I try to not think about who's over there but I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to win that round just a little bit more than most. But, um, 
you know, we went up there and, and did our job. And I was I was about to go into pre-stage, and Chris lit both bulbs. So I was like, oh, look at this. This guy's double bulbing me. So that just pissed me off even more. <laughs> and I was able to rise to the occasion, and I was 008, and he was 80-something. And my guys put a great car underneath me, and we went a, a 46 with a 1, which is low ET of the round. So yeah. um, I think that was kind of like a statement run, and, and we let our scoreboard do the talking. But a lot of it just, just stems from um, – you know, we, we needed some blocks, uh, some Mopar blocks, and Chris ha- had told Kramer, who's another racer, um, yeah. that we can't have them. You know, uh, don't don't sell them to the Freeman Bunch. You know, keep them, and they're just sitting there. He's got, like, nine virgin blocks, and um, wow. we're going to replace them or buy them. And he, Chris said, nope, don't do it. So that kicked off my team owner, and then the ball just started rolling and, and then the crap talking started. So <laughs> it is what it is, you know, and I said, I'm not going to, not going to focus on it because it just doesn't matter to me. I don't have time for it. My, my team owner doesn't have time for it, but um, we, like I said in, in my interview, we'll let our scoreboard do the talking. We don't have to say anything. They can, well, they're talking about us and, and dwelling on negative things. We're working towards uh, winning a second championship. Oh, and there was uh, plenty of that going on up at the starting line. Your boy Brutus, I think he I think he pulled that a couple of times and spanked Jason Line uh, and to get himself into the uh, semifinals. And you you've said it on this show before that uh, that uh, Alan Johnson is probably one of the best at playing those games. But he he went double bubble a couple of times. So uh, there was a, there was a lot of that going down uh, this weekend at the Motorplex. Yeah, it was definitely interesting up there. And you know, Pro Stock is notorious for playing games on sure. the starting line, but. For the most part, everybody's kind of shut that down a little bit. But AJ and Larry Morgan, and you, there are kind of a few racers that you can expect that from. And AJ has a handbrake in his car, so he's like really smooth and really good at it. Um, so yeah, he did he did do it twice on Sunday, and there's no rule against it. No, but, you know, talking to talking to Jeg on the phone yesterday, you know, he's like, you just did an excellent job. He said, you know, when he was driving. It, it was cool because they they try to mess with you, and what it ends up doing is making us better. Yeah. So, um, just uh, it is what it is. But it's all in good fun, you know. You gotta sure. when you're when you're uh, running behind or you're a little bit of a disadvantage et wise, you got to do what you got to do on the starting line. I mean, there's no rule against it. Well, and Erica, I think you've done a good job from the standpoint of being able to focus so much on your lane, like. Whatever they do over there, it doesn't really matter because you're going to pull up there and you're going to do what you do. And uh, in, in your lane is really the only one that matters at the end of the day. Yeah, thanks, Doug. I yeah. appreciate that. You know, I, it's taken me a lot of years to, to get good at it. Um, you know, my the start of my career wasn't always easy by any means, but I've become a better racer with more seat time. And, and that's something that, that's helped my, my game is having the right mindset and that my car, my lane, me and the tree, me and my guys, and uh, yeah. not focusing on who's over there, what's going on over there, and just doing your job. Erica, one of the fun things that I saw was uh, the post that Courtney put up with you guys doing a dance with the belt buckle on and all that. That was so funny. <laughs> I like to choke her after she put that on the internet. <laughs> that was funny. We, we were at stuff for Sunday night after, after we won the race, and I pulled out my phone, and it was the first thing that popped up, and I was like, I am going to kill you. Oh, She's no. like, it's so cute. People are going to love it. I'm like, great. But no, we were doing a little <laughs> shindig cowboy dance or something stupid. We were always goofy when we get together. That was fun. So uh, – have you talked about strategy for Las Vegas? I mean, considering and the points being what they are, um, have you talked about uh, what your strategy going into Las Vegas is is going to be, or is it just stay the course? Stay the course. Yeah. Um, you know, I talked with my crew chief Monday. We always have a Monday morning post race talk on the phone, and um, we're just going to do what we do. We're not we're not changing the way we race because of the lead that we have um, just like we wouldn't change it if we were behind. We got to go there and do the best that we can to qualify as high as we can. And I mean, it sounds pretty cliche, but it's, it's yeah. true. We're just going to focus on it one round, one at a time, you know, Friday, that's what we're focusing on. This is two qualifying sessions then same with Saturday. And then we're going to race one round at a time on Sunday. So not get ahead of ourselves and just do our best. And that's when we, that's when we do the best. So Vegas has been really good to us in the past, as yeah. you guys know. Um, mm-hmm. I think we've got an 
consecutive round win streak going there, and our goal is to make it 22. So we'll <laughs> go in there with our, our head held high, but we're, we're also going to get to work and, and do our best. Well, that is something. How comfortable does uh, – I? you kind of just answered that, but how comfortable does the point lead get when you're almost eight rounds ahead of the next competitor? <laughs> well, and Gary Gerald said that to me at the post-race interview last week in Dallas. I just was, like, kind of flabbergasted, you know. Like, I knew that we were going to have a, a pretty significant lead, but I didn't know it was going to be eight yeah. rounds. It's just – it's it's crazy. It's surreal. It's a really neat position to be in, but at the same time, like, you know, I've done a handful of interviews since Dallas, and it's just like, you know, it's not over yet. I'm I'm not allowing myself to think that because, you know, I, I don't want to say I got lazy, but on Sunday I'm, I missed the tree in the finals against Jonathan, and I knew when I unclutched it that I was late. You know, when your typical light is, you know, 8 to, to 15 on the tree and, and you're a hundredth and a half behind that, you can feel it as a driver and, I uh, I was actually pretty disappointed in myself, and I don't know if you watched the coverage, but yeah. you can uh, ESPN tapped into my radio, and that's the first thing I said when I went through the finish line. I'm like, man, guys, I'm sorry I was late, but thanks for the great run. You know, like they picked up my slack, and and I want to be better. So um, in Vegas, that's what I'm going to focus on is being consistent and and not getting lackadaisical because of our lead. Like I'm going to pretend like I'm racing from behind and I want to, I want to rip their throats out. So <laughs> that's the mindset I'm going to have. And I'm going to see if I can do a better job next week. So, and you look so uh, nice, but then you talk so tough. Know, <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say, it's the attitude you got to have. Doug. You know, yep. you know, as a driver, you, if you don't believe in it and you don't, you don't walk the walk, you might as well not even take your car to the starting line. So that's kind of the, the mindset that you got to have and, and you got to stay hungry. So I'm not being ugly. I'm not being mean. I just, that's what I want. I want it so bad. And uh, it's, it's nice to have to apologize for a 30 light, <laughs> which, which is a, just a little bit ridiculous. Uh, Erica, thanks so much. We really appreciate your time. Congratulations on your eighth win of the season. Unbelievable. And go get them in Vegas. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'll talk to you soon. Eric Ander Stevens joining us on the straight line. And when we return, we will talk to the winner of the funny car class at Dallas. Del Worsham will join us next. You're listening to the straight line more right after this. The road to victory lane isn't just for drivers anymore. Introducing the official daily fantasy game of NASCAR at DraftKings.com, America's favorite daily fantasy sports site. Just pick a team of five drivers and stay under the salary cap. Outscore your opponents and win. Hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code COAST to play for free. You could win part of the $1 billion in prizes being awarded this year. Enter COAST to play for free now at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert here to talk about safe driving. In early 2008, my two sons were killed in a car accident that was caused by speed and inexperience. After the accident, I learned that over 6,000 teenagers each year are killed in car accidents, so I formed a nonprofit organization called Brakes. Brakes stands for Be Responsible and Keep Everyone Safe. Please visit our website at putonthebrakes.org to learn more about responsible driving and what you can do to keep our roads safe. The Straight Line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now here's Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Big thanks to Eric Ander Stevens joining us on The Straight Line and going from one champion to another. And we are joined by the winner of the Funny Car Class at the Dallas Motor Plex this weekend. And right now with a slim lead over Jack Beckman in the Funny Car Points, Dell Worsham joins us. Congratulations on the win, Dell. Uh, just uh, give us a little bit of... Um, uh, insight about uh, the pressure going into that final round, knowing that you're racing Jack Beckman. Yeah, well, it's, <clears throat> again, yeah, thanks. But uh, 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 knowing you know, knowing you're racing the guy who's right behind you in points, and and whoever, whoever wins that round is going to lead their leading the, uh, the points. Uh, the points is, was definitely was definitely pressure. Um, both of us had trouble, and uh, we just got really fortunate you know, to come out the win on that one. Dell, it's hard to believe or imagine, really, that you've been so strong, and yet the lead over Beckman <laughs> yeah. is so close because yeah. they're they're just. I mean, you guys are fighting it out tooth and nail. Like this is this is unbelievable. I, 
I agree. You know, I mean, you know, well, we kind of started out the countdown, you know, 50 points back because of our position, and he was he was first, and we were we were fourth or fifth where we started, and uh, and then we, you know, you win three out of the four races in the countdown, and you would think you would have some kind of lead, yeah, and right. you know, that one race there at Reading, you know, was really was really a thorn, you know, and uh, to go up first round and then and then and then have him win the race and set the record, he gained you know over you know over 100 points in in one event, so. Uh, going to be close dog it is a it is a tough tough race to go out again like i said to win three or four races and have not even a two-round lead is pretty is pretty amazing what what's been the key to the success going into the countdown with that car running i mean you guys are running at the top of the heap what's what what's changed that has made the car be so strong well i mean i don't think a whole lot's changed other than other than you know once we once we got the car you know we we picked up our our pace a little bit and we, we, we we're definitely a little bit behind uh running through the summer so uh once we left Indy and uh, and uh, and we had the car where it was capable of winning and fast enough, I think uh, I think a little bit of lady luck. You know, we won a couple of a couple of close races that we lost earlier in the season, and uh, I think those losses combined with just really paying attention and knowing you know you know how fast the car can go and when it's a good time to take a risk and when it isn't. Uh, I think the crew chiefs and the, and and the crew have just uh, they've done the job as far as preparing the car, knowing the parts that are going to break, making sure the right parts are on the car, and then. And then, of course, making just making the right decisions. And you know, one thing I know for sure is your experience running a car. So it's not only John O and Nikki, uh, but I mean, you're there, and uh, I mean, that's like having an ace in the hole, really, for the team. I think. Well, I mean, it's definitely a combined effort. You know, I I don't think any one person like the old days goes in there and, and can really make every perfect decision. So uh, a lot of right. checks and balances. Uh, um, <clears throat> it's. It's definitely, it's definitely just a combined effort, Doug. It really is. If, yeah. if I could say that any one person was responsible for this or not responsible for it, I'd be, I'd be wrong. It's just, it's this entire uh, collateral organization and motorsports and the way this thing's been built for the last three or four years. Uh, it just kind of built into this, and we just got lucky that it kind of all came together at exactly the time we needed it to. A fantastic driving job in the final round. Kind of take us through that entire run uh, because both, as you mentioned, both you and Jack – had problems in during the run, and then the car makes a violent move. Just kind of take us toward uh, through that entire run and uh, what you're doing inside the car. Okay, sure. You know, uh, we went up there, and uh, and like you said, obviously there was quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of uh, pressure. You know, and we all knew it. And, and and if I told you, if I told you it was just another round, it would be a lie. I mean, in reality, <laughs> it is. It's 20 points, like any other round, but it's a big one right then. So uh, we're up there, and. Uh, uh, apparently, apparently, uh, he definitely, he definitely left on me a little bit. I don't, I don't know if I was as late as what it appears or regardless of what the reaction times were. I thought he did a pretty good job and, uh, it's going down there and, 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 and I never did see him and got to pass the eighth mile right there. And I got ready to put my hand, as a matter of fact, I think my hand was on the parachute lever and all of a sudden the car just shoots over to the right. And as hard as I've ever driven a funny car in my life, I pulled down on the wheel to the left and even took my right hand and shoved up on the wheel. And uh, and let and as I let up the throttle, the weight must have transferred back to the front end pretty good because then the car shot back to the left and uh, and just went through the beams and I didn't see him, but I wasn't sure if we had either crossed the center line or one. And uh, I got on the radio, you know, and I'm asking John, I'm like, did we win? He's like, yeah, we got there first. I'm like, did I cross the the, the center line? He's like, I don't think so. He goes, but it's close, and uh, it was close. And apparently he had the same problems. You know, he kind of had some some similar issues over there over there in the other side. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. The car had been, on, had been on the track every single run, and 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 had been running great down there, and hadn't and hadn't got the tires loose. And for whatever reason, in the final round, uh, the tires came loose way down there. Man, well, you went into the final with lane choice, which is always a good thing. Uh, Dell, tell us what would it mean to be able to pull this championship off? Obviously, you won the championship in the uh, in the top fuel class, and then I remember, obviously, you won the funny car championship with your dad. Tune in the car back in 1992 uh, at IHRA that same year as, uh, as as I won in the top field. But what would it mean to drive Scott Coletta's car to win the championship and just all the things that go along with this as hard and as long as you've been trying to win that funny car championship? Right. It, 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 it would mean a lot. You know, I really, to tell you the truth, I hadn't thought much about it, and I tried to just kind of kind of ignore that up until uh, – leaving Dallas, you know, when I was driving home in my motorhome, you know, and I started thinking, you know, only a couple people have ever pulled off, you know, winning in both categories, and then especially just winning in funny car, and it would be, uh, I'm not going to say it would be, it would be the final thing I wanted to accomplish in my driving career, but it would definitely, it would definitely be a highlight, and, uh, 
it would definitely mean that all those years and all all that hard work and you know all those years we finished second or third to John Forrest and 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 the Schumacher cars if we could, if we could pull it off it would be it'd be very satisfying to know we took a team we built it and uh, and we kind of did it our way you know and we were able to pull it off so it's going to be hard work and uh, even if even if and I'm, I'm not going to say even if we don't win but whatever whatever is going to happen is going to happen and as long as we give this you know 100 percent and we know that that every round we ran as hard as we could and we got every point we could possibly get that was coming our way. Uh, uh, either way, I'm going to be awful proud of what we did this year. How hard yeah. has it been to uh, keep uh, together all the information that you've gathered during the season? Because there's been so much change and so much improvement in the funny car classes. I mean, these cars are going nearly a tenth of a second faster than what you started with at Pomona. And trying to keep all that straight and what you started with and what you're running now has got to be a, – a bit of a challenge, Dell. Well, it, it, it is, but but here's what's cool. You know, we have more people just gathering data and looking at data mm. on our team right now than I had completely working on my car, let's say, in 1990, uh, 1992. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. the, the, the folks at TRD and, 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 and Toyota, you know, they bring in two engineers, you know, that, that, that come in and help us gather data and keep stuff straight, and they look at the runs and they analyze it, and they bring us back information and feedback, along with John and Nikki who are spending all their time just, just throwing in information and trying to figure out what happened. So basically, you know, there's four or five people that are just uh, just just looking at data and just and just making sure that we know where we are and what's coming and trying to predict and analyze what's gonna happen, you know, you know, forty five minutes down the road. So it's mm. it's changed quite a bit. There there are more people today to analyze the data than I had than I probably had on my entire team, yeah. Wow. Hey, Dell with uh, two races to go and roughly a two round uh, points you know, differential between you and Beckman. Do you treat the last two races any different than you have, or you keep doing what you're doing and let everything fall where it needs to? I'll tell you, Doug, in, in my heart, I believe if we don't win these two races, uh, I believe we're going to have to win both races if we're going to win this championship right now. That's just wow. how I feel the competition is. That's how, that's how hard I feel Jack and them are going to try. So uh, yeah. I believe we have to go out there and, and, uh, and definitely win Las Vegas and uh, – and going to Pomona, and it's probably going to take a near win there to to, to, to pull this off. Wow, how's Connie been during uh, all this uh, uh, championship run? I mean, obviously he's he's the man, uh, but uh, not very often has he been in this position, been this close to championship. Uh, what's he What's he been like during this whole process? Uh, you know, he's been concentrating on his car and, and Doug's car, and he's been he's definitely had his eye on us and watching what we're doing over here and. Uh, I think he's like the rest of us, you know, he doesn't want to really get too excited or, or, mm. or, or start or start any kind of celebrating at this point or, or, or even talking about it. We're, uh, I think he's stayed pretty much, pretty much the same focus that he's had all season. And I look over at him and he gave me, he just gives me that same mean old grunt, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, I, I look at him, you know, you know, every time when the car starts, I see him sitting over there on his golf cart, so I know he's got his eye on me and yeah. he doesn't appear to be smiling yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know what? With two races to go, you're in a you're you're in the position that there's a lot of other people wish they were in. So that's a good Fact. place to be. Uh, absolutely, going into those absolutely. Last and, and 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 I gotta imagine, you know, he's, he's sitting over there watching us and knowing, you know, that I'm driving Scott's car and it's a yeah. DHL car and how far they've come over here. He, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure he's pretty proud of what's going on right now. Man, that is awesome. Del Warsham winner at the Dallas race this past weekend in the DHL Toyota Funny Car for Coletta Motorsports. Man, great win. I'm going to be coming out to Villa Park over Christmas time to visit my mom, so we'll have to get together and take you out for a hot dog or hamburger or something. You got it, man. <laughs> Just give me a call anytime. Sounds All great. Right, buddy. Driver of the DHL Toyota for Coletta Motorsports and winner this weekend of the Funny Car Class, Del Worsham, joining us on the straight line. And when we return, we will talk to the guy that spanked him this weekend in the bike category, Pro Stock Bikes. Jerry Savoie will join us next. This is The Straight Line. More right after this. Dale Jr. here. I wear Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans for any occasion. With new styles and great fits, you'll look good and feel comfortable anytime, anywhere. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans are built with a U-shaped construction, so they give you more room where you need it. And their four-way flex technology moves with you for all-day comfort. In the garage or out and about, Wrangler knows the ins and outs of comfort. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Waking up to smells of burnt rubber, smoldering campfire, and barbecue sauce. I was there. 
cheering on the drivers you love and booing the ones you don't, while watching them battle the baddest track in NASCAR. You can bet I was there. Escape reality for a weekend at Talladega. The chase for the Sprint Cup returns October 23rd through 25th. Call 1-877-GO-TO-DEGA for tickets. This is more than a race. This is Talladega. You're listening to The Straight Line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Big thanks to Del Worsham for joining us uh, this afternoon on The Straight Line and joining us on the telephone right now is the winner of the Pro Stock Bike Class, and a guy that had a bike that nobody could touch all weekend long, the driver of the White Alligator Racing Suzuki, uh, Jerry Savoy joins us. Jerry, uh, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it, and, uh, and congratulations on a humongous win this uh, weekend in Dallas. I appreciate it. It's always good to talk to you guys, and uh, you know it's always on a good note. So, yeah. hey, uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Jerry, your bike was running incredible over there. Low ET of every round, you were driving the heck out of that thing. Could you have imagined, uh, you know, I, I remember what wasn't too long ago when you won your first race and it was like, man, that, you know, these guys are really getting that thing to come around. But now with a dominating performance like you guys had in Dallas, you've got to be, uh, you know, less than two rounds out of lead. That's a pretty exciting place for Jerry to be right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I – um. I'm not one to to to, to uh, boast on things, and but you know if I if I do become in, or get into first place, then I'll be a little more excited. Uh, but for now, I'm just concentrating on uh, race by race or round by round, and and try to move forward. You know, Andrew's a hell of a racer, and so is Eddie. So uh, we got a lot of work cut out for us, and. Uh, we just go out there and, and, and try to focus and do the best that we can do and and uh, make the best of it, you know. And if it comes our way, we'll take it. We, Me and Doug were talking in, in the <clears throat> open about, uh, obviously, they they found something, at least this weekend, uh, to be uh, as dominant as you were. I mean, we're talking three to four hundredths on, on the entire field in every round. I'll take a chance on it, and I'll just go ahead and ask the question. Uh, no is uh, an absolutely suitable answer, but it, did you find something in that bike over the last couple of weeks that helped you uh, be as dominant as you were this weekend? Well, if you, you look at us back when we first ran fuel injection, we're going to get into this uh, pretty deep. I don't know how much time we got. but No, go right ahead. You know, I'm gonna, uh, you're going to hear the first interview of the – uh, not the real Jerry Savoy. <laughs> we had a real Jerry Savoy when you piss him off, okay? <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you look back on us from way back when, when we first ran fuel injection uh, two and a half years ago, I had one uh, crew chief come up to me and say, yeah, y'all going to run fuel injection, huh? Yes, sir. He said, well, I'll kick your ass all day long with carburetors. And I said, well, I just feel like it's a thing in the future. And if you're going to take the bike class to the next level, you need to step up and move forward. So you might kick my ass now, but I'm sure at some point in time we'll have the last laugh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, it, but if you go back and look, the progress we made from the beginning of last year and we figured it out, that, look, NHRA came into my trailer and said, what do you need, the crankshafts are not the answer. This was in Atlanta in 2014. And I said, and I looked at right in Mr. Blackwell's eyes and right in Mr. Glenn Gray's eyes, and I said, we don't need anything. And they said, what do you mean? I said, you, they said, you realize we're willing to give you anything, just about anything to bring the Suzuki's up to par. And I said, listen, on the dyno with carburetors, this is the baddest pro stock motorcycle engine on the planet. But with fuel injection, we haven't figured it out. Give us a couple more races and let us try to show what we can do. The next race, we went 682 and set the record. And everybody's like, oh, shit, look out. <laughs> we, missed yeah. the, we missed the countdown by one point. And you didn't hear no crybabies out there last year when we were running good towards the end of the season. Hmm. They didn't say nothing because we wasn't fighting in the points chase. Okay? Beginning of this season, they switched fuel on us. We couldn't hit our ass. We didn't even qualify in Charlotte. Freddie Camarino's running carburetors. We tuned in his bike, or Tim is, not me, and went a 684 and qualified, I don't know, three or four. I mean, the way he was, but it was badass, okay? 
198 miles an hour. Come back up to Charlotte, we start turning this thing around, and now we're flying, and they want to cry and talk about putting weight on us and, and this and that. Well, I think that's a crock of shit. <laughs> because let me tell you something. You can buy a Vance and Hines engine. You can build your own chassis. You can buy a Motec ECU, and you can buy the same injection system we got. Good luck is all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> are, are they talking about putting weight on you, Jerry? No, the other, it's too late now. But yeah. The other guys are complaining. Look, let me tell you something. People want to see motorcycles and cars and top fuel and everything go faster and faster and faster, okay? And you're going to punish us for working hard? No. I think that's a crock of bull, man. Yeah. You don't come yeah. and punish. You don't. You hate the game, but don't hate the player. Okay. <laughs> and hate hate the crew chief, but yeah. don't hate the hate the rider. Yeah. My yeah. guy stumbled up on something at one o'clock in the morning, laying in his bed, looking at his computer and all his notes. Hmm. Wow. And he says, "You know what? I think we, I think something's wrong here. We need to change this." And my boy, it shows it. Yeah. No kidding. What we see, what we've been seeing on the dyno is what is showing on the track. And you want to fuss? Look, let me tell you something. The Buell guys have no reason to fuss. Now, there's only a few of them that's fussing, okay? And a couple of Suzuki guys are fussing. But Chip Ellis can run with us. You saw what he did in Indy. Yep. Okay? The Harley guys can run with us. They got good motors, and they're not fussing. They build our stuff. <laughs> But you know who your friends are. Chip Ellis is a true friend. He he means it at the bottom of his heart when he tells me congratulations. But these other guys, they whining and complaining. Hector Jr. spanked my ass for three and a half years. I watched that boy drive around me every time I raced him. Not a shoes on the other foot. And they crying. <laughs> they all crying. <laughs> but I'm not laying down for nobody. And Atta I'm boy. not turning the screw back. And we're going to get out there. And I'm not saying it braggingly because we're running good. If they would have left me alone, I would be nice and quiet and leave it alone. But we racing, partner. <laughs> and they better get their shit together is all I can tell them. Yeah. Well, with two racers left, you, you know, your bike running the way it is, I'll tell you what, Jerry, you're, uh, you guys have put yourself in a great position to keep doing what you're doing. And uh, you know what? Things, things just might roll your way is what it's looking like to me. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I'm I'm very low key and I'm not all up on that, but uh I didn't even know where I was in the points till after the weekend, but you know, I, I got a great crew chief, I got a great engine builder in Vance and Hans, and Eddie Craywick. I mean, this guy's racing against me and they and they giving us good good performance. And you know, I've heard for years guys moan and groan and complain about Vance and Hans. Oh yeah, uh I got my engine back and it won't run this and that. They tell you it's a good one. You just got to reach in there and grab it and pull it out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, if you would see some of the things that we are doing or Tim is doing, so little minor, minute changes, once you get in that window, it is unbelievable. You know, it's just crazy how that thing responds to just a very little change. And it's not just power. It's a complete chassis setup. Well, over the winter, he worked on all kind of stuff. All kind of stuff. You know, it's not just a chassis. It's not just the tuning. It's not just the engine. It's not just the rider. I mean, it's everything in a complete package. And, Doug, you know more than anybody what it takes, especially running top fuel, you know. So yeah. all I can tell them is go to work. <laughs> That's what Hector Jr. used to tell me. He said, Jerry, you just got to work harder. So now we work harder and we go fast and everybody wants to get mad at us. <laughs> you know, I don't get it. How, I've never been in this position before, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, how weird is it to uh, to compete against a guy? Or uh, <clears throat> during a weekend, um, d can you communicate with Eddie? Because uh, we've, we've talked to him on this show about, you know, he, he basically runs this Suzuki program for Vance and Hines. So – do you have or do you have the opportunity to talk to him during the weekend, or do you just kind of have to keep that relationship um, with him on the side until you know maybe during the week or so to talk about the the motors or or whatever you're getting hey, from him? Uh, Eddie doesn't help us with tune up. 
I mean, he tries to be as fair as he can with everybody in, in the pro stock motorcycle uh, category. He'll, if we have a problem with an engine, like we might tap a valve or something, he'll come look at it. And mm. one time we had, we scuffed two pistons in Indy and he says, yeah, you might've got the ring land. So, you know, I would probably wouldn't run it again, but as far as saying, Hey Eddie, what kind of timing should I run? Sure. We're in our own little world. And I'm going to tell you, he'll ask, uh, ask Tim what we're running and Tim won't tell him. So we do have that <laughs> relationship to where they build the engines for everybody and we tune our bike according to what we see fit of what it wants. And, you know, uh, Eddie does not give tuning tips to any of us that I know of. If he does it for other people, then I, God bless him. But uh, we do some things, you know, um, that Tim does to, to massage these things. And, um, man, look, it's a great deal. I, I don't even talk to Eddie on the phone. If I called him right now, I'm sure he would answer my call. But um, Tim talks to him during the week about a couple of things that we want to try and want to do. And you know, you can, look. The bottom line is, if you want to run carburetors, run them. But don't hate me because I'm running <laughs> fuel injection, and we taking our program to the next level. You know. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Jerry, don't, are don't any of the – are, yeah, right. Hey, Jerry, are any of the other guys and the competitors working on the FI trying to figure it out too so they can they can follow in your footsteps there, or are you the Lone Ranger right now? Well, no, Karen Stouffer's been running fuel injection. I've been there five years, so I know they've been running six or seven. Oh, wow. And Gary Stouffer's a hell of a tuner. I mean, Karen yeah. runs really well. Yep. She damn near beat me because I was – Laid on the light, I had a 60, she had a 10, and, and Gary told her, if you don't cut a good light, we're done. So she threw one out there, and uh, God bless her, man. She's a, she's a real sport, and I love her. And, um, you know, Gary's a great guy, and, and he knows that he would never go back to carburetors. So, you know, the opportunity's there for these other guys. Now, can they figure it out? I don't know. But I know one thing. Once you get out that window with this new fuel we got, it's almost impossible to find it. It's it's just like this stuff is terrible. This is hmm. the worst thing I've ever seen. Wow. Jerry, tell us a little bit about the alligator farm. How's the alligator farming business going? Uh, it's good, man. Like I always tell you, I've been blessed. And uh, even though the economy's kind of down a little bit, we, uh, we're still plugging away. Got some long-term deals for the next three to five years. And, you know, I hate to tell you this, but like this morning, I got up at 1230. <laughs> so, oh, boy. <laughs> You know, I always told you I'm an early riser this morning. Yeah. I was up at 1230. <laughs> I went to bed at 930. By 1230, I was rested up and, and going and do something in the shop. But, uh, you know, no, it's, 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 it's a good thing. It's very interesting. And if you ever come to Louisiana, you guys come on by and we'll, we'll let you stick your hand in one of them pins if you can't get bit once or twice. <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, if, so basically, uh, it, you're a little bit like an alligator uh, today, Jerry. I mean, you, if you poke an alligator long enough, uh, you're probably going to get bit. And I think you've been poked a, a, a couple too many times here w by some of these guys, and now you're biting back. I like to see it. Yeah, you know, I don't have any sponsors to answer to, and uh, I'm not being dis di uh, rude to anyone or anything, but if you got something to tell me or complain about, come tell me to my face, man. Don't go behind my back and let me hear it from everybody around the pit. I mean, you know, what? What? some of them got to complain about. Some of them run in the low 80s. Matter of fact, it was a gang of them in the low 80s. Yeah. And, and this thing here just liked what we gave it. Now, we might go to Vegas and get out the window a little bit. I don't know, but, man, as long – if you look back at the record for the past year – uh, besides Charlotte, we, we've been coming on little by little. We had a hell of a bike in St. Louis, and I threw it away on a 001 Red. So oh, that's right. You know, forgot um, about that. No, uh, and then we come go to Reading, and uh, really kind of blue in Reading. We kind of missed it, but um, Dallas really showed the true colors, and Vegas should be really good. And so has Pomona. Hopefully, my goal is to go to first to go to 200. So. Um, we're knocking on the door, man. We had a little headwind in Dallas, and it kind of hurt us a little bit. But you could you could see it in, in Pomona. That would be awesome. Jerry, congratulations. Great job out there this last weekend, and good luck at these last couple races. 
I appreciate you guys and uh, and uh, everything you do for the sport. And uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you again, and it'll be it'll be a lot more exciting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Driver, the white yeah the white alligator racing Suzuki uh, Jerry Savoy joining us on the straight line. And when we return, we will wrap up another great edition of the show. You're listening to The Straight Line. More right after this. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your vehicle has a bumpy ride, it might be time for new shocks or struts. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy four Monroe shocks and struts for the price of three after mail-in rebate. Improve your vehicle's steering, stopping, and stability with Monroe shocks and struts at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Restrictions apply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Chet Herbert designed and manufactured the first roller cam for racing in 1949. Today, NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert continues his father's legacy. Herbert Cam stocks cams for virtually all racing applications. From street ride to NASCAR and NHRA, Herbert Cams can also custom grind a cam for any application. Cams, lifters, valve springs, push rods, and all related performance valve train and engine parts in stock at the best price. Visit HerbertCams.com or call our expert technicians at 800-444-7373. For all your racing needs, Herbert Cams. It's the straight line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Hope you enjoyed that interview with the Raging Cajun right there, <laughs> Jerry Savoy. He is fired up. Um, you know, if, if we talked to him a long time ago. Uh, you know about the fuel injection, and he was running it, and it, it was kind of hit struggling. and miss, and they, they were, were struggling. struggling with it. And no question. Now all of a sudden, he's kind of got that thing figured out, or his team has that figured out. Now everybody wants to uh, to badmouth him, and uh, he's firing back. Well, I don't know if it's everybody. I think, or not he, everybody, he, but a lot you know, of people. The, yeah. You know the the uh, the the brothers, the Ranas. It seems like, you know, whether it's the Harley guys or now Jerry. It seems like they're always the ones in the mix here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can kind of deduce it from there, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, but um, um, I, I think there's some uh, some of that camp that uh, are, are probably not real happy about it, but um, uh, they have really worked at it, and we've seen the progress. It's been slow, but now that now that he's uh, found that su- success, it's it's. Um, been great well and certainly it's like eric ender says let this let the scoreboard tell the story mm-hmm. and that's what jerry savoir is doing right now uh you know obviously he was a little fired up we've had him on the show several times i've talked to him at the races i've never heard him that wound up so he's they yeah. got his feelings hurt and i'm guessing that's not going to be good for the competition <laughs> yeah if, and just like i said you know he, he's he's like an alligator like if, you know what he raises on his farm you poke one of those things you know enough you're really going to tick one off, and he's going to bite back, and that's exactly what he's done. And you, got uh, it. you know, when uh, like you said, he could go to Las Vegas, and, and, and they may be out to lunch, but uh, I I doubt it. I whatever doubt they it. found now is probably going to stick with him for these next couple races. You got that right. I thought that was interesting because when we talked to uh, Eddie Craywick, he didn't feel like anybody else was or anybody was making the power to go 200 miles an hour. Jerry's thinking that they could possibly do it, so that would be uh, that would be something at Pomona. Yeah, it, probably not going to happen at uh, at Las Vegas just uh, just because altitude. of the, the altitude there. But uh, Pomona definitely, and you could get that tailwind, and, uh, and that could help you. Big thanks to uh, Eric Ender Stevens, Del Worsham, and Jerry Savoy for joining us this afternoon on the Straight Line. For Doug, for Daryl, I'm Marty. We will talk to you next week right here on MRN.com and The Straight Line. You've been listening to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Tune in next Wednesday at noon for more NHRA talk. The Straight Line is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. The Straight Line is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.